everybody, Phil here from AndroidCentral.com and we've got a new toy here in the office and that would be the Motorola Photon Q on Sprint. So it is basically, look, I'm gonna call it Sprint's version of the Droid 4, right? Very, very familiar, at least in the hardware. Uh, a little less industrial, it's a little more uh, just friendlier feeling in the hand, you know, less metallic. We got these soft edges here on the back that actually feel really good. A uh, little textured back battery cover. And yes, of course, it has this really, really good uh, keyboard. Very familiar if you've used the Droid Ford. All the keys are very, very similar. So they are raised up from the, uh, the back of the keyboard itself, each individually. And each is individually lit around the sides, if you can see that. It's a really cool effect, too, by the way. It looks neat uh, as, as well as being functional. So let's just take a quick walk around the hardware. Uh, there is the keyboard, right? And that's probably the most important part of this phone, I think. It's a slider keyboard, five rows. And you'll see the home screen does rotate when you open and close the keyboard. The home screen is also the other really interesting thing here. So uh, before we get too much into that, let's talk about OS because this is another one of the first Android 4.0.4 ice cream sandwich phones uh, that Motorola has put out. And it's a new UI, right? So slightly. Uh, but that's not even what's getting me here. I mean, we've seen these sort of... Uh, widgets before from Motorola, but what's really cool is that's it, right? We don't have seven home screens that there's junk all over right now. All we have is this one main home screen, and it, I guess pay particular attention to what they put on here. So we've got phone, people, text, camera, the Play Store, the browser, email, and voicemail. Now it's all important that they put the Play Store on there. I really hate it when manufacturers and carriers bury it on other home screens, but because there's only one home screen on here right now, even more important. So slide over one, and now you have the option to add a page. You can add a blank page or start with a template, and you can manage the pages once you have them. Very, very cool feature. The other thing you'll notice that's different is Motorola did scan the uh, on-screen buttons. Now kudos to Moto for going with the on-screen buttons instead of something on the device, which I'm okay with, or even worse, going with a, uh, a physical button like Samsung has done. So let's see, as long as we are diving through the settings, we have, where's my storage? There's my storage. We have not a lot of space on here, right? Only about, what's that, eight gigabytes probably total once you uh, discount the system. But we do have, where'd it go? We do have a little door hidden here on the side. It's actually really well hidden for a micro SD card, right? So you can put that in there. Uh, other things in the hardware, Make sure we're holding it right side up because it's almost tough to tell. Uh, we'll start at the top. So we've got 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the power button on the right hand side, volume rocker up and down, and an honest to goodness camera button. It's nice to see those back. Here's the back of the phone again. So we've got an eight megapixel camera with flash, micro uh, USB and HDMI as well. So it's not every day that we see HDMI out still. So many people are using uh, MHL adapters, which I'm not a big fan of. So it's nice to see that there. It's there if you need it. If you don't need it, it's not gonna bother anything. There's a speaker. Now, it is important to mention that this battery cover actually doesn't come off. <laughs> it's just there, and that's just the way it is. So it is a, a 1785 milliamp hour battery. So hopefully that'll last you a little while, but it's not like it's huge, like say the Droid Razor Max. Um, the display is decent, so it's a 4.3 inch, 540 by 960, that's a, a QVGA uh, display, so it's not the highest resolution we have now, but it's not bad. Why did I say QV, uh, VGA? QHD, excuse me, I know these things. Uh, it's being pushed by a dual core 1.5 gigahertz processor, so they're talking, you know, seven and a half hours of talk time and all that stuff. Uh, the other big thing to know is this is a world phone for all you travelers out there, and I know there are a lot of travelers who have been dying to have a world phone with a keyboard. Here you go, finally, it's here. So let's see what else. Here are the uh, app drawers. Very kind of stock ice cream sandwich slash jelly beanish, right? Apps, widgets, and you just slide over. You can keep going, or you can tap the tabs, and you can go directly to the Play Store where I'm not signed in or anything yet. Other thing of note that I really like how Motorola does this, and it's worth mentioning, is uh, I first booted this up. I haven't done anything on it, right? First thing they show you is the Motorola privacy policy. This is really important stuff, and I like that they put it there in the notifications before you do anything else. They also give you a kind of instruction on how to get rid of notifications, which is cool. So swipe an item to remove it, which we all know, of course, but it's nice for people who are new to Android. And you've already seen we've gone through this a couple times, but you've got a wholly different skin on the settings menu. And I like this actually, it's not bad. I think it's it's a little more professional than what Samsung has done. 
but it's a little more friendly than a stock Android. So it's, it's kind of a nice happy medium. And I'm all about happy mediums. So there you go. Um, I tell you what, let's look at the apps that are installed. So, ooh, Chrome's on there by default. Interesting. Uh, Gmail, of course, all the usual stuff. Emergency alerts, that's relatively new. So if you start seeing alerts on your phone for your area, don't be afraid. They're supposed to be there. Uh, Quick Office, Sprint Zone, uh, that's Sprint's little app to uh, let you download more applications without kind of clunking up your phone from the beginning. Sprint ID, so it is a Sprint ID device, but you see the ID button is gone and we're kind of back to normal, so that's nice. Vehicle mode, and that's it. So that's why they can get away without a whole lot of preloaded apps because they're all in Sprint Zone now. I do encourage you to go check it out and see if there's anything there you might want to use. So there you go, guys. A very quick look at the Motorola Photon Q on Sprint. See you later.